Hello and welcome back to Joyless Gaming, and uh, in honour, I guess, of the absurd rash of new subscribers I've gotten recently, absurd for me at least, I can only imagine due to some renewed interest around the internet in Injustice 2, I thought, well, since people keep watching my legendary videos, and I don't really have anything else to do in Injustice 2 anymore, I'd make myself a tier list of the legendary gear pieces. And basically, as a guide to new players, as to which ones are worthwhile going for, and which ones you should probably, well, avoid. Uh, I'm sort of new at this, so give me a break, please, if this doesn't work out quite so well. But essentially, what factors into my ranking of the gear is both... It's effects, which is not just its specific effect that's specific to the character, but any other attribute bonuses or uh, statistical bonuses to certain specials, as well as how easy or difficult it is to acquire. So right down here, I've got this avoid tier because of Blue Beetle. Do not get his. It takes 200 guild events and you lose the ability to spam his projectile, which is one of the most effective things he actually has. So don't bother going for Blue Beetle's legendary. Leave it. All right? Leave it. But case in point, get it is a case of it's either really easy and or it is so amazing that if you play this character, you must have it. Go for it is more of a why not you know it's not it's either not terribly hard or it's pretty good to get so you just go for it take it or leave it is really as it says it's up to you it's either not terribly hard or it's not very good and it's hard to get don't bother is well while we're talking about ones to not bother with we have raidens and we have deadshot one of the last or well, the last one i did was deadshots uh Mainly, they're down here. I guess I'm going from the bottom up. Mm, it'll be a mixed bag. I won't be going in any particular order. Uh, like I said, I'm new at this. But Raiden's gives him a damage bonus on his damage bonus for his trait. So, not worth it, really. And Deadshot's even less worth it. Because <laughs> it's, a, it's a lower damage bonus on... Rifle shots. Only on rifle shots. Not on gunshots. Rifle shots. Yeah. Do not bother with these two. Uh, at the same time... Ooh, while I'm thinking of it, with the don't bothers, we've got... That is Raphael, right? Yeah. I had to find one of these that had uh, each turtle separately. Uh, Raphael's is another one to don't bother with. The only reason that you might ignore my don't bother, is that in order to get the good ones, which really is mostly just Michelangelo's. Donatello's is alright, but as a character he's not amazing, but uh, Michelangelo's is pretty good. So to get one of the turtles, you have to spend 3,000 minutes, but it counts for all of them, so you can go for all of them, and you might as well go for all of them. If you're going to go for one turtles, you may as well get all four. But Raphael's is really... Not good. And with how not good he is in the game already, at least in the meta of the game, yeah, not a lot of point. Um, extra damage for when he's got his trait built up, but when you've got your trait built up, you want to spend it. So, yeah. Don't really bother with that. Um... I guess at the same by the same token, don't bother necessarily with Leonardo's, although because the meter burn trait is accidentally in the game anyway without his legendary, and otherwise it's like sword damage. But again, three thousand minutes makes it hard to get. Um, which is why I will put Michelangelo's up in a go for it because it's not a like a must have, simply because of the three thousand minutes. 3,000 minutes would really... Uh, which, uh, speaking of, thinking of 3,000 minutes, I am really scatterbrained with this. I didn't plan this out terribly well, so I apologize. Starfire. 
These are all left at right is no particular order either. Uh, Starfire, I would say go for it rather than must have because of the 3000 minutes. Otherwise, hers is really good. Hers is really good. Go for it. <laughs> but be ready for the slog of 3000 minutes. Uh, how about we actually go in order from these guys here too? Uh, Batman, go for it. Why not? Not terribly hard to get. But the triple jump, you might get some mileage out of it, but it's got damage flat percentage damage bonuses on Batarangs and on his character power, which is worthwhile. And it's, as I said, not terribly hard to get. Superman, uh, another one that I would... Uh, 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 actually, uh, I might say take it or leave it. Because, well, two things. One, he needs guild events. It's only 100 guild events, but he does need guild events. And they're annoying. Not annoying, not as annoying as 3,000 minutes, I discovered. But also, his legendary is sort of matchup specific. If you find that you want to have two sets available, one without the legendary and one with, that with the legendary, it's for anti-zoning because it makes his trait become projectile immune. And that's only with heavy zoners, but there are also there are also uh, ranged specials that don't count as projectiles, such as uh, Black Adam's Black Magic or Wonder Woman's Shield Toss. That's not a projectile, technically. Projectile immunity does not apply to those. So, yeah, take it or leave it. You can... Superman's pretty straightforward to play, though, so why not go for it? Wonder Woman is another, ooh, toss-up. Real toss-up of go for it or take it or leave it. I will say take it or leave it because of 3,000 minutes. Hers is actually quite good, but also more specifically because you can take one of her equipable abilities to make sure that you guarantee one blessing at all times, and you get another random one, which just improves her trait, really. It just makes hers slightly better. But I dare say, for the most part, you're probably either going to specifically want the damage reduction or the air dash. And you'll have a setup for either. I mean, you might want the shield buff. You might want to guarantee the lasso buff. But personally, I would go damage reduction and a random, or air dash and a random, because... In certain matchups, the air dash will be important, but 3,000 minutes, which is why I will say take it or leave it rather than go for it. I'm just going to be sort of making this up as I go along. Aquamans. Um, take it or leave it. It's not super hard to get, but... Okay, it's... Other affixes, aside from the... The way it modifies his trait to do pitiful amounts of thorn damage while his trait is active... That's not worth it. And the other affixes are percentage bonuses, but one is to attacks with sea creatures, which is pretty much his throws and tentacle strike and maybe his super move. So not everything. And the other one is damage bonus to trident attacks when below a certain amount of health. So, you know, situational at best. Take it or leave it, really. As I said, it's not hard to get. Atrocitus. Oh, bleh. Ooh, that's a toss-up. I'd be willing to say don't bother, simply because 200 guild events plus his specific finishing moves are annoying to get. The AI does not like to get hit by them. <laughs> I had an awful lot of trouble trying to finish off Atrocitus. And while it has the interesting thing of allowing you to be able to use Dextar whenever you want, he immediately goes on cooldown. So you don't get the really effective burst of being constantly plus or being able to do lots of chip damage or extending your combos or anything like that or controlling the screen space, which is basically what all Atrocitus players built their playstyle around, was when you get Dextar out, ooh, let's go to town. Um, but on the other hand... Him being available all the time means that if your opponent push blocks, you're not waiting for bloody ages to get Dextar back. But 200 guild events. 
So don't bother. Um, I yeah, I'd have to have a think about Gorilla Grodd. Uh, Harley Quinn. I'm going to say go for it, mainly because she's it's not hard to get, and the specific bonus that it gives adds something rather than changes so you don't have to use it and you won't use it because it lets her use uh, Ivy's burrowing trait for all of her trait meter plus a bar of meter it's not worth it you'll never use it but it does give her percentage bonuses to cupcakes and gunshots and as I said it's not hard to get so go for it if you play Harley she's kind of fun go for it the Flash. Um, yeah, get it. Um, <laughs> if you play the Flash, get Flash's legendary. But you will, small caveat, you'll want to have his set of four uh, to pair the legendary with because it adds a second, one full second of uh, character power duration to all three different lengths of the uh, character power thing. So... The short one becomes a full two seconds, which does give you quite a decent amount of time to actually get a follow-up and maybe a bounce attack. Uh, more so than the regular short duration. But also extends the long duration, and that's kind of fun too. So it's it's not the easiest to get. Definitely isn't the easiest to get, but Flash's trait is so good. And this just means that you can use... Well, you can use the medium version, which is probably the same duration as his regular one, but it comes back faster than the long one. Or you can use the short one just to get an extension into a bounce attack off of something that might not normally allow you to get a bounce attack. So, yeah. Flash is, like, Flash is really good in Injustice 2. <laughs> Once he gets in... He goes to town, and this just makes his trait better. So, despite the difficulties in getting it, I would say get it, especially if you're a Flash player. I suppose if you're not a Flash player, don't bother. Bane. Um, hmm. Bane, I'm almost tempted to say avoid. Now, again, the usual stipulation of this is my personal opinion. Other people may think differently. I'm going to put him as an avoid, because while it removes the cooldown on his trait, it always is guaranteed to take health away. And you are not always guaranteed to lose health when you're on Venom cooldown while playing as Bane. So while you can, the uptime of his trait is significantly higher with his legendary, you're constantly taking damage. Because every time it would, go, it would normally go on cooldown, it will take a percentage of health away. And that hurts. To be using his trait to be constantly losing health, I would say avoid. If you're really good, you probably wouldn't worry. And you might put that in the uh, take it or leave it. But personally, I think the guaranteed loss of health, no matter what you do, just means don't use it. Um, Ivy. Ooh, Ivy. See, Ivy there. Definitely go for it. In fact, I'd almost put it in the get it, but I don't recall hers being super easy to get. I don't think it was super difficult to get, though. But hers has got a permanent damage reduction while her trait is active, and her trait is always active as long as you don't use the meter burn uh, burrow attack, which makes it temporarily not active. So otherwise, you're walking around with a 20% damage reduction. <laughs> which means... Get this, get this legendary. Um, Brainiac is a don't bother. Just yeah, do not bother. With Brainiacs, it the meter burn trait kind of sucks. It's not a lot of point to it, and the other affixes are, or is it just the one? It's slightly higher chip damage with tendril attacks. Slightly higher. I, yeah, don't bother with Brainiacs. Um, Robin, Robin, I would say is a take it or leave it. Yeah, Robin's is a take it or leave it because it's, yes, it's a full screen, unblockable super move. 
but how often are you relying on your super move? And it's it's maybe unblockable, but it's not unavoidable. And otherwise, you only get you only get a, a, a small chance, a very small chance. I think it's five percent chance for critical hits on sword attacks to do like fifty percent more damage. Not really worth it. But I don't recall it being so hard that I would say don't bother. And Robin is actually pretty good in the right circumstances. And he can certainly do quite a bit of damage. Black Canary. Um, again, not something I remember being super difficult to get. And not exactly amazing. So I'm just going to... It does alter the frame data. And I think it makes it safer, if not slightly plus. Or it makes the, the um, fully charged one, the level 3, safer. Actually safe, too, I think. So, yeah, that's a real sort of take it or leave it. Um, Supergirl. Here we got Supergirl. As I said, no particular order. Uh, Supergirl, Supergirl. Um, again, I'm going to say go for it. I don't think she was terribly hard. And it gives her bonuses to do with Sun Charge. Which does actually disable her trait, so that kind of sucks. But if you're not in a zoning matchup, then that doesn't matter. And you can also pair that with her set, one of her sets of three, which gives you bonuses with Sun Charge as well. And you can end up having this thing where you are taking less damage and dealing more damage on everything, but you just can't use your trait while Sun Charge is active. So I'd say it's a go for it, but it's not, not an essential. Uh, Swamp Thing. You know what? Swamp Thing's a don't bother. I like Swamp Thing in the game. I I actually do. For some reason, I do. I like the way he plays. I like, you know, he's difficult to get certain things to work, but I would say don't bother. The Air Dash has got utility, but he has got such a floaty jump, personally. I suppose, I yeah, extended caveats I should put in point out that I have spent a lot less time playing against other people so bear that bear that in mind you know your mileage may vary yeah otherwise some things is just sort of a quite a bit of effort for something that's not terribly amazing Catwoman um, you know what is another don't bother 3,000 minutes need I say more and actually it's effect on her trait means that um, any regular combo you might do where you'd have a random chance from claw attacks to get a scratch, that same regular combo probably won't include enough whip attacks to guarantee that you'll get a decent amount of scratches compared to the randomness of sometimes getting almost full scratches from one combo with all of the claw attacks on so many normals. However, in the neutral, you know, you can use whip attacks in the neutral, the um, the down plus back three, you know, long range whip trip. The whip trip special, I suppose, as well, and the anti-air whip special, you can't have both of those at the same time, but but 3,000 minutes, think about it. Uh, cheetahs, I, I'm going to say, yeah, take it or leave it. She's got to play the game a specific way. Hers was not hard to get, but while it is not detrimental it's not staggeringly amazing either it doesn't do anything that her gear sets don't do really aside from the chance to bleed which when I tested it was a rather random chance because sometimes you get a few stacks from one combo and then sometimes you just wouldn't get a stack at all from heaps of attacks so you know as I say take it or leave it cyborg avoid his sucks his legendary just sucks. Uh, part of the work was done for me, so racking my brain trying to think of how difficult his was to get. I don't think it was super difficult, but by the same token, the chance to get the free stun on his projectile is exceedingly low. So you can't rely on it. Uh, you'll hardly ever see it in a real combo and then go think, oh, I can get a combo off of that. So... Just don't bother. Dr. Fate is going to be another don't bother. His effects were neat, vaguely, but 3,000 minutes. 
Not worth it. Uh, Green Lantern. Green Lantern's going to be a take it or leave it, mainly because of the 200 guild events. Being able to do all of his Injustice 1 moves is, uh, is pretty neat. You can use some of them individually on custom builds, but having them all in the one build is, is neat. Uh, and the construct damage, of course, always helps. But it's 200 guild events, so take it or leave it. It's up to you. Firestorm is another take it or leave it, really, because it's not an amazing effect. And it's not super hard to get. At least I don't recall it being super hard to get. I hope not. My memory sucks. Green Arrow. Actually, Green Arrow is alright. I'll say go for it, because... Not super hard to get, again. And it changes all three of his trade attacks to have comparable versions. So, yeah. Meterless Restand with Sleeping Gas Arrow. Meterless Combo with Sleeping Gas Arrow. It's, you know, it's neat. Black Adam. Uh, Black Adam is another go for it, mainly because it's not hard to get. It wasn't that hard to get, but it's not that amazing either. It's 10% longer on his trait duration and a slight bit of meter drain on the down forward one. But not hard to get. And Black Adam's a really good character in the game anyway. <sighs> Captain Cold, here we go. Um, I'm really severely tempted to say don't bother. Yeah. Again, your mileage may vary. And he's got guild events. He does have to do guild events. And while the fast charge is nice, the trait draining quickly does suck. And some of the other effects are achieved through other gear. He's got a set of two that gives him the damage over time while they're frozen, which his legendary does. The only thing is that this one, of course, pairs nicely with his set of four, which gives an extra freeze duration. But you'd have to look at some setups to see how much you can get done in one charge and then immediately using it. But, yeah, 200 guild events as well, so... Yeah, I'd say don't bother. Scarecrow. Um, Scarecrow was kind of eh. But I'm going to say take it or leave it. And not because I think I'm running out of space here. I'm going to say take it or leave it for Scarecrow because it's against other people. It'll have the interesting effect of being able to reverse their inputs when you use your trait. But you have to meet a it. Um, but otherwise, yeah. I mean, it's not super easy to get. I don't recall it being super easy to get, but by the same token, I think it just took a lot of time of making the AI do stuff for me, and then I had to do the specific finishes. So, yeah. Take it or leave it. Dark side. Um, hmm. You know what? I'm going to say go for it with dark side, because you get eye laser damage. Not much. And the unblockable super, I mean, it's it's neat. You probably shouldn't be using it. But I also recall this being not terribly hard to get. The, a bunch of the DLC ones are not very hard to get. So they're all going to be more recommended than some of these other ones. Uh, so yeah, Darkseid, go for it. Darkseid's fun to play. He's just not very good at the game. Um, uh, then we take, take Hellboy. Um... Hmm. Again, I didn't find Hellboys to be terribly hard to get, and if you are playing him optimally, you're going to be relying on the leap and the air dashes to sort of trip your opponent up. Getting to do that twice is probably going to be something you'll like to be able to do. And yeah, not terribly hard to get, so I'm going to say get it. If you play Hellboy seriously, get his legendary. As if you needed me to tell you. Joker. Ooh, Joker. Actually, I'm going to put Joker as an avoid. Um, maybe there are some things you can get out of his modified abilities. He loses the teeth. He loses the chattering teeth. And it gets replaced with one of three random things. One of which is unblockable, sure, but you never know which one you're going to get. And so because it basically negatively modifies his 
his game plan and the teeth is one of his like that's his primary setup tool that's what he does a lot of his work with is getting the teeth out forcing you to block forcing you to block low you know you get to mix and all that sort of stuff so yeah because it changes that i i would consider it actively detrimental to the playstyle of the character which means avoid it uh sub zero is going to be a take it or leave it his clone can now absorb two projectiles which is not amazing but um you get an ice weapon damage so yeah. and not super hard to get either atom actually i'm going to say atom is a get it again not super hard to get and being able to use both kind of interactables if you get ones where a gadget interaction is better than a power interaction then you absolutely want to make use of that because you can be really annoying with some of those gadget interactions so yeah not to mention that if it works in tandem with his ability he has an ability where you can summon your own interactables they're usually just throwable but they might be maybe they can jump off of them I never tested that. I should have tested that. I'm an idiot for not testing that. Somebody test that. But anyway, if you play Atom, get his legendary. It actually will help you in some matches. Red Hood is going to be a take it or leave it. I like playing Red Hood. Um, I like his combos and stuff like that. But his legendary is not amazing. Mainly because the knife damage you can get from his set of two. And comboing from his super is... Why are you using his super? You should be using his meter on combos. He gets more damage from a combo for one bar than he does off of his super meter. And all you're going to do is be able to get a bounce attack after his super and then a jump attack into string follow-up ender. It's not going to be much more damage than the super. So, yeah. Take it or leave it. It would have been... It would have been a go for it if it also had gunshot damage, but it doesn't. It's just knife damage. All right, uh, Black Manta is a get it. Um, meterless combos, using his trait instead of bar to combo off of his teleport. It means he can save the bar for eye lasers and chip damage, you know? And you can combo on into his teleport from his fastest standing button, which means that you can get not quite as much damage as you would if you spent bar on the teleport, but his trait recharges faster than you get meter. So, yeah, Black Mantas definitely get it. The dark suit thing, yeah, I wouldn't bother. It's actually more being able to cancel out of the teleport with his with his trait instead. All right, where are we? Enchantress, 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 Enchantress. Chantress, I'm going to say a take it or leave it because it's not super hard to get. Damage over time on a hex. I mean, you get more mileage in terms of the damage on a hex if you use other effects while the opponent is affected by a hex. So, yeah, it's a real take it or leave it. Gorilla Grod. Um, oh boy, I can't quite remember how hard it was to get Grods. So I'm tempted to say take it or leave it if you're committed, but Grodd is one of the harder characters to play in the game. Probably the hardest character to play in the game, let's be honest. Um, and it just, like, it gives him, it gives him, yeah, I'm going to say take it or leave it. I don't remember if it was super hard to get, but it does give him a chance to just fall out of combos as well. So, you know, the fact that the uh, reading your opponent's inputs only happens while his trait is active, which is sometimes hard to set up, and I think Grodd is really just hamstrung by his trait having so much utility that doesn't make him... doesn't really make him necessarily better some of the uh, better characters in the game. And lastly, we come to Donatello, and I'm another one I'm probably tempted to say take it or leave it, if not, don't bother. Um, you know what? I'm probably going to say... Oh, this is a toughie. This is a toughie. People get mad at me if I say, um, don't bother. Uh, <laughs> I 
like the, the actual new gadget it adds is good and it can do quite a bit of damage you get your opponent in the corner but 3,000 minutes and Donatello's already not one of the better turtles I mean I've got Leonardo's down here and he's probably the second best turtle after Michelangelo in the game that is I'm not rating the turtles by which one's best I mean which one's best in the game and you're probably going to say that Michelangelo because of all of the obnoxious mix he can do is the best turtle in the game if you're going for a turtle as I said you may as well get all of them so this is a take it or leave it I'm going to say take it or leave it because if you're going to go if you play the turtles at all and you play Michelangelo and you want to get his legendary you may as well get all of them as I said when I was getting them but ah, oh, that's all of them. I'm I'm actually looking at this and thinking I'm surprised I put more on the Avoid than just Blue Beetle. Uh, again, Bane questionable, depends on how you know good you think you can be constantly losing health. And Joker just takes away his most effective tool. So nah, not worth it. Actively detrimental. Which is why, as I said, Raiden and Deadshot are here, because their legendaries are crap, but they're not actively detrimental to the character. <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. There's my Injustice 2 Legendary Gear Worthiness tier list. If you like one of your characters, and you only play one or two characters, go for their legendary. Seriously. If you like the game and you like the character you play, even if it's a 3,000 minutes, go for their legendary. You might as well. If you like it, go for it. But if you're like me and you're some crazy person who wanted to get all of them, or maybe not all, but a bunch, if you wanted to get, say, five of them, because you like a handful of characters, this, I think, is... Yeah. This plus my videos. Though some of them... I went into better detail than the others, which is because uh, some of the videos are older. Anyway, like I said, this is my first time doing something like this. Yeah, I don't know. Welcome to all my new Injustice-related <laughs> subscribers. Sorry that I'm actually already done with the game. I don't have much reason to go back to it. Um, enjoy my legendary videos if you can. Enjoy the game if you can. I mean, I don't because it's in the name. Right. <laughs> I'll shut up now. Thanks for watching. If you did, if you watched this far. Sorry if I badmouthed your character, but I'm badmouthing their legendary, which means I'm badmouthing Netherrealm, not you. Uh, let's keep digging a hole for myself, shall I? No. Um, goodbye for now. <laughs> Bye.